Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of our summer season of That's a Wrap. My name is Austin Jameson. Joining me, as always, is... Anthony Gentry. Hello. Yeah, so we've come to an end yeah. of our... Little Summer's f- over. Yeah, uh, we've had four hits that we... Uh, we had five, but uh, I didn't want to watch Top Gun. <laughs> Sue me. You gotta watch Top Gun. I'm... It's one of the best of the year. You know... It's That's still awesome. in theaters. You can still go out and watch it. I I don't know how to express to you that I I. It's no offense to Top Gun, but I don't care. <laughs> you will be proven wrong. I don't. You will cry. I, you okay? You want to take a bet on that? You think if I watch Top, do you want Top Gun one then Top Gun Maverick? I'll cry at some point. Yes. You think? Genuinely, you think I'll cry? Yes. One dollar. <laughs> one dollar you have i'll a watch deal. it i'll try and watch it with uh my girlfriend so she will she'll be the ref she'll be honest um do you know your val kilmer knowledge i have no idea who that read, is read up on val kilmer okay because that is also one of the things okay interesting okay okay uh, anyways, that <laughs> about a movie we've not reviewed. Um, we didn't even plan that. <laughs> we we did not. We are now on episode four, uh, final before the summer. We have the uh, fall semester starting very very yeah. soon. Uh, when are we just jumping into it? Whenever the school year starts, or we, we our first episode, episode September is right? going to be in September. Yes, is going to be the review of Three Thousand Years of Longing, right. on September fifth. Okay. Um, we are going to be on Mondays now yes. at one thirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a chance even. Uh, well, let's let's, let's not talk that. about that yeah. in case it doesn't happen. Um, we have some things behind the scenes. Yeah, Who we're knows? we're making some moves. You know, just business as usual. Uh, we're a very big podcast, as you know. Um, we have so many like sponsorships. Mm-hmm. We have listeners all across. The NKU campus I mean, area. We, we have some listeners across the globe. That's true. Honestly, um, like, shout out, because whenever yeah. I see the analytics, I see, like, other countries, and I'm like, you guys rule. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to anybody who listens shout to us. Shout out to the world. Shout, shout out to the world. I you couldn't have said it world. better. Um, okay. Well, let's go ahead and... Start the show. I have yes. not even said it yet, but the main topic for today that we'll get to in a little bit is Bullet Train. Yes. Uh, the final movie we both equally deemed worthy of review, uh, starring Brad Pitt and a concoction of a lot of people. A <laughs> lot of people. Uh, but we will be getting that to in just a little bit. We have one. Well, we don't. We have. We don't even have a trailer yeah. really. It's more just something that we haven't talked about. Um, I don't know if we, it, I think if the trailers have just dropped between our episodes. They have. So it's been like too long yeah. or just like everybody knows like right about after. it by now yeah um but we figured we might as well throw our, our thoughts in before the actual Two show cents. comes out because everyone wants to know our thoughts well obviously we have fans all over the world we just <laughs> talked about that um we're talking about she hulk attorney yes. at law um it's a marvel project that's coming out again yeah. I, you know what? I'm going to completely derail this before we get into She-Hulk. Did you know Disney Plus is also doing a They're premium upping, and ad yeah. service? Yeah, I just saw they're upping the price. I don't like that. But, I mean, well, if people, they're going to put out a lot of, like, premium content, I guess. I don't. But still. I don't care. People yeah. got – streaming services got big because they didn't have ads. Here's the thing, though. They are upping the price in December. My charge goes through again in November. Why? Oh, so, yeah, okay. So, I won't be affected by it for at least another year. Mm-hmm. So, I'm I'm fine. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe. They might they might still charge me. It's though. rigged. Um, yeah. We, if I wanted to watch commercials, I would watch TV or YouTube without Adblock. Of course, I wouldn't use Adblock, especially if you're listening to this podcast right now that we don't get monetized to de- for. To derail this even more. Yes, go for it. I got a three-month... Like, free trial for mm-hmm. YouTube Premium. Okay. And I can't go back. I like yeah. it. It was so nice watching YouTube without ads. The trial mm-hmm. ended, mm-hmm. and then I was like, I'm not gonna pay for it. Mm-hmm. And immediately I put on a video ad. Yeah. And then like five seconds later, another ad. Yeah. yeah. And so you know what I did? I got, I got YouTube Premium. They got me, but I got the student uh. price. 
So. What's the sh- well? Let's not <laughs> advertise for YouTube Premium too hard. I'll talk to you about that after. You know, probably take the YouTube Premium money and give it to us to support us. I agree. We're gonna be not opening a Patreon because we do not have the means. Well, we have the we means can. to do yeah. it. I just tell us if you would support us yeah, on, on Patreon. Of I, course, we would have exclusive content. Of course, absolutely, we yeah. would. Um, <laughs> you just give us money. We're not going to do uh, anything extra. I mean, don't say that too. <laughs> I. We'll talk about that again after the show. Um, she Hulk. She uh, Hulk. Hulk, still green, different person. Good synopsis. <laughs> I lawyer, mean, lawyer, also still smart. No. <laughs> Um, it, it is a law show. That's what yeah. they've said a lot. It's going to be... I've heard it's um, um, written like by Vince Gilligan, and it's uh, actually coming up on its final uh, episode here soon. Yeah. I got to uh, get on that. Have you not? Have you, se- have you seen Breaking Bad? I have, yes. Have you seen Better Call Saul? I've been waiting for it to end. Fair enough. But since it's about to end, I'm probably just going to try to binge it all on Netflix, mm-hmm. get that seven-day free trial for AMC, yeah. and then binge that last season. Yeah, there is one episode left. And yeah, then that I don't over. think I can wait another year because I see so many people talking about Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. And I want I want to get on it. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, we do we like <laughs> we keep trying to avoid She Hulk. It's okay. I don't I, know why. I'm kind of excited for it. I think it'll be a good. I think show. I'm so excited for Daredevil. Yeah. I'm excited uh, that it's nine episodes. It's not six. Well, that's good. So they'll be able to that. flesh things out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my big thing is. So is Hulk a person now, or is he back to Hulk? Because I just saw a clip today mm-hmm. of Mark Ruffalo in the scene, like as br- just Bruce Banner. Yeah. Well, he's in the post credit scenes for Shang Chi yeah. as Bruce Banner, not Hulk. And so I'm hoping they explain it here. They probably will, but it'll be like a it'll be a Marvel joke where it's like like look, and he like shape shifts his hand into Bruce Banner or something, yeah, and then maybe. They'll I mean, just be like, look, we're friends now, and they won't elaborate on anything. Maybe they will. Maybe this yeah. will be like a, finally the first in depth look that we get at the Hulk instead oh, I, of just I am like. I'm sure uh, that w- it is. I'm <sighs> guessing that like he found a way to just be Bruce Banner, mm-hmm. and the way She Hulk becomes She Hulk <laughs> is they get into. Like, she gets into an accident. She needs a blood transfusion. Mm-hmm. He's the closest living relative, so he has to give her his blood. All right. So I wonder if, like, I didn't even him know that. opening up, like, mm-hmm. a vein, like, <sighs> makes him transform back into Hulk. I don't know. But That'd you know what? I've liked the trailers. I I don't really get the criticism <clears throat> of, like, the horrible CGI. It doesn't really bother me. I, I, I just want good writing. It seems like they're giving us that. Um, honestly, like, I kind of just want this to be a law show. I don't want a big bad. Mm-hmm. It looks like they might have that. Yeah. With, um... Uh, Abomination? No, no, not Abomination. It's the actor from The Good Place. Uh, I think her name is Jamila Jamil. Is she in it? Um, yeah, yeah, wow. she is. I did not know that. She plays, um... I keep thinking it's Tatiana, mm-hmm. but that's the actor who plays she hawk her name is tatiana oh Mazzani. okay cool um here let me just see this yeah no here. absolutely um it's yeah jamila jamil her name is titania titania yeah is that how it's i i'm i don't i've not seen good yeah. place in so T-I-T-A-N-I-A. long t-i-t-a-n-i-a that's her character in good she hawk or when she she hawk she hawk yes i'm so confused the character in the good place is tahani okay lots of teas lots, lots, lots of, of teas um yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I know Daredevil is probably my favorite thing to come out of the MCU and it's not even technically the MCU. Yeah, it's not MCU. Um, <laughs> and I I'm afraid of them pushing the character too far and then banking on everybody being like, I loved the Netflix shows, I'm gonna go see this and then them like butcher his character. You he see, was... I think they understand that and that's why they're not going to do that. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, I, I know, know we don't really have a lot of faith in the MCU right now. Yeah. I mean, if you listen to any of our past Marvel reviews, except mm-hmm. for, like, Moon Knight. Yeah. It's not the most positive. Yeah. And, I, I mean, even then, Moon Knight was the most disconnected from the MCU it's yeah. ever been. And that's why I loved it so much. Yeah. And even then, that wasn't received very well just from people in general. Yeah. Uh, so, it, MCU is in a very weird spot right now. 
I I will watch it out of like right now obligation. I'm still oh, okay. I still feel like I I should just keep up with it. I don't want to fall behind on Marvel and yeah. like cuz I I still in like in like it, but I don't like I I want them to do more with it. The first episode of uh Miss Marvel was really, really good, and then none of the other episodes had, like, the same amount of art. I remember... I disagree with that. I think the fifth episode is the weakest, Mm -hmm. but Miss Marvel, I thought, was just great. I loved Miss Marvel. Every single MCU show, for me peaks so hard in the first episode and mm-hmm. then all of it's it's always declining. Yeah, I, think, I see what you mean because like, like even in Miss Marvel even though I loved it the mm-hmm. style Yeah, of it that's was what, that was so amazing to gone me. gone by episode 6. I remember watching entirely through episode 4 and they never use any of the and that that's probably the point is or I'm, well I don't even know if it's the point or if it's they like they just front loaded the aesthetic of the show uh mm-hmm. into the first episode and was like look how like glamorous yeah. and artistic this the is the first i say they even do in the second episode mm-hmm. they and do a in, little bit in that they kind of do what sh- the shazam movie was doing of oh let's see this guy learning his powers mm-hmm. with miss marvel learning her powers right and i kind of wish they kept that kind of energy throughout the entire show and mm-hmm. i mean i feel like i keep saying this like don't have a bad guy don't have a bad guy but like just have the first season because they said they're I I believe they're going to have multiple seasons. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about this big overarching villain. Just have her learning her powers yeah. and what it means to be a superhero mm-hmm. because you do get that, but it feels so rushed. I agree. It, it's like and and that's shocking as well with like how much time they because most origin like. <sighs> I would even say the first Avenger was like a decent origin story, and they had two mm-hmm. hours to do that. Yeah, these shows have four to five to six hours of like time slots to tell a new origin story. Mm-hmm. I thought Moon Knight did a pretty decent job, where near the end it kind of got muddled up. Yeah. Um. Same with like Falcon and the Winter Soldier started really good, and then they had they introduced yeah. sixteen plot lines, and that all tried to culminate at the end, and they just turned into a train wreck. It, um, like the final episode really is just a play by play of okay this is this is how this plot line wraps mm-hmm. up here's one scene dedicated to that here's one scene dedicated to the next plot line it's it's overwhelming yeah i don't uh, think honestly i don't think she hulk will do that like from what everything i've seen from it it mm-hmm. feels like they know what they're doing it feels like they are dedicated to this being like a law show and having mm-hmm. like a comedic bent to it yeah. in all the trailers it shows um i don't know the character's name mm-hmm. i just know the actor tatiana maslany and she hawk but her mm-hmm. learning how to juggle this work life right. balance how to even like date as she hawk mm-hmm. and just how that how this all means for her and they show that so much mm-hmm. that i feel like they're going to have it throughout the entire show instead of Maybe the first three episodes and the last six episodes. Oh, no, a big bad. You got to step up. I think, well, at this point, it's hard to predict, but I think they're going to commit to that. Or, like, I think that's just the format that they're doing right now with all the origin stories of the new characters. I think it'll be fun and quirky, and then Daredevil will come in around episode two or three, and then they're going to, like, find... Well, I don't think this will be a kingpin thing. Uh, I think they're going to hold Kingpin off for Echo and Daredevil's own project. Um, if they even let mm-hmm. Kingpin and Daredevil fight again. I mean, it, I think it, Daredevil will come in maybe season seven or eight, and it will just be, like, a few short scenes. You mean episode uh, seven or eight? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I I don't know if this is – I don't think this is a spoiler. This is a news article thing that it, – it's been out. If you don't want info about She-Hulk um, – well, sorry for anything we've talked about so far, but uh, do you or do you care about? Like, I think we've talked about it before. Even hit me. Uh, Daredevil is a very significant part of the show. Uh, they've are like oh because he's also a lawyer. Well, that is what well that's what people theorize the connection is. 
but it, it's been confirmed that Charlie Cox's role as like or Daredevil and Matt Murdock is very present. Oh, okay. and it's it's not yeah, just like a side that. character or a cameo. Oh, okay. Um, so or that's why I said he'll be introduced pretty yeah. early. Okay, I, I, could, I see. Yeah, I see what you mean. I I hope it is. I could see him of... getting introduced as Matt Murdock in episode one or two, and then yeah. he reveals Daredevil later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I hope if it is Daredevil, mm-hmm. that is not like oh he comes in and we gotta take down Kingpin's new crime ring, right? Because that I, that just wouldn't fit. It just feels just, weird since like I or I think Hawkeye is still my favorite show that they've done. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the most consistent, even with the end still feeling jumbled, like mm. a signature jumbled, like MCU is. Yeah. But them or the whole resolution of them bringing back Kingpin and Hawkeye, and then like wrapping in Echo with all that. Echo I really liked. Um. I thought everything was pretty balanced there, and it was it, it was it was a good show. Yeah. But Kingpin ended in Daredevil season three in such a like like almost poetic way. It was it was very very powerful and very good yeah. writing. Don't say anything because I haven't not. seen season three. I've mm-hmm. only seen the first two seasons. I won't. But um, um, I don't know. I feel like it's not even that warranted. But I'm getting more faith in the Disney Plus shows because I am or Groot right. Of course, yeah. yeah. The no, new hit kids like, non-canon Groot show with She-Hulk having nine episodes, mm-hmm. even though it's like a different kind of MCU show. But Andor getting mm-hmm. uh, twelve episodes per season, right? And Daredevil, yeah, Daredevil supposed to have like eighteen episodes, right? Just for one season. Mm-hmm. So it feels like they're understanding the criticisms that they're getting, which is like overwhelmingly it's too short. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping like. If they're taking that criticism, they're taking other criticisms yeah. and applying them to like future shows. I hope so. Yeah. I we should move on. I agree. Um, the final thing I'll say with the MCU is that just like I'm still cautiously optimistic. I still like yeah. the spirit of it and the amount of and everything like, they announced. Like at yeah, the past, yeah, I forgot Comic-Con. about like D23. And it's all honestly, on. it's all exciting. Um, I just hope they're. No, mm-hmm. Not all Doctor Strange, Multiverse Madness, and Love yeah. and Thunder. I remember when those were pitched and announced and teased for the first time, and now we're here, and it's like, well, <laughs> dang, yeah. Uh, but that's but the MCU. Anyway, yeah. Uh, sorry for taking seventeen minutes to talk about that. Seventeen minutes. <laughs> we are seventeen minutes into the episode. Okay. Um, let's um, go ahead. You talk about a movie that came yeah. out. On Speaking HBO? of uh, franchises, yeah. Um, on HBO? Hulu. Hulu. Yes. Okay. I watched. Prey, yeah, which is a prequel to the Predator franchise. Interesting. I've only seen the first Predator, mm-hmm. and that was maybe I've not seen anything with it. Um, I don't know, like five or six years ago. So it's been a while. I don't mm-hmm. remember a lot from Predator, but I remember it being super good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just really liked it. It was really. I mean, it's got to have its notoriety for a reason. Yeah, I really liked how they like got all these like macho men mm-hmm. and then like they have this aura of confidence and mm-hmm. then okay. they just tear them down immediately like the predator picks them off one by one awesome and then they all turn it into like scaredy cats mm-hmm. it was it was like a cool critique yeah but um with prey it's set in i don't i don't want to say the time period because i don't remember okay. but it's centered on this native american tribe mm-hmm in post or pre-colonial America and they're being stalked by a predator huh. and um one of the natives who lives in the tribe her name is Naru uh-huh. she kind of like steps up and is like I'm going to hunt you cool <laughs> and okay it is like I don't I don't want to say much but it is so good i've heard a lot of really good things it's about honestly it. like the action is so good mm-hmm. i love how like one of the things about her is because she's a woman mm-hmm. in that time period people don't take her seriously and right. she uses that to her advantage uh-huh. like the whole movie is called prey right and she kind of acts like prey a lot mm-hmm. of times because the predator like she learns maybe halfway through the movie that the predator won't attack you if he thinks you're weak, if you're a prey. Because 
the mm-hmm. predator's whole thing is he's a predator. He wants to find the top of the food chain. Okay. To have the challenge because for him he's just hunting for sport. Uh huh. Would you say that you have to see the first movie to understand oh, no. this one? No, at all. Do you think this stands like because, alone really well? Yeah, because it is a prequel. Mm-hmm. There's almost no ties to it. Like they say some of the lines that uh, that they say in the first Predator, mm-hmm. but you really don't need to watch the first one. I mean, they really give you everything you need to know. It's he's an alien species. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just trying to find whoever's at the top of the food chain because there's like one scene where he's observing this rabbit get like chased by a bigger animal, mm-hmm. like I think a bird. And then so he's about to kill the bird, but then he keeps observing and he sees a snake kill the bird. Gotcha. And there's no one else around the snake. So he's like, okay, that snake is the biggest one here. So I'm going to hunt you. Cool. And it sounds interesting. It honestly is. Um, I, yeah, I think it's really smart and clever about how they do it. The action is really, like, thought out and just done really mm-hmm. well. It's Fair really enough. entertaining. Uh, yeah, you should go watch it. I honestly probably will. Mm-hmm. I, I want to watch this movie a lot more than Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. No. Um, it, I mean, it's not a great movie by any means. <clears throat> wow. But... As soon as I throw top gun in no, the no, no, no. i just mean like pulling it's your guns not going back. to end up on my top 10 uh-huh i do like i do think it's a great movie mm-hmm. but um it's no top gun it's no top gun because top gun is so much better it, it truly is how but about i do i do recommend <laughs> watching it uh-huh. it's worth a watch definitely mm-hmm. i kind of even want to watch it again fair enough yeah uh we have one more thing before we <sighs> go ahead and talk about bullet train uh i promise we will get around to Bullet Train at some point. Yes. But I am, I, I've am i not heard anything about... Well, I've heard things about the movie, barely. I've not heard it, your thoughts about this, and I'm very so, curious. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it away. A few weeks ago, mm-hmm. I got a text mm-hmm. from my dear, dear grandmother saying, Hey, Anthony, I've been wanting to see this movie. Mm-hmm. Would you like to see this with me? Okay. And I said, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this is a movie that we talked about on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I said it looks like it could be interesting, mm-hmm. but who knows? Right. I think you flat out disliked it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I don't remember being too excited for it. Uh, that movie is, mm-hmm. of course, where the crawdads sing. Famously. Um, this movie's trash. <laughs> it. Um, okay. It's about this woman who lives in a marsh. And mm-hmm. everyone hates her because she lives in a marsh. How dare she? Uh, yeah, people call her Marsh Girl. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Screw you, Marsh Girl. And, Got him. Um, okay. I, yeah, it, the movie starts with these kids finding a dead body, very stand by me, and the cops going to, like, finding the body. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, could be an accident. Let's say it's a murder. Yeah, let's just go with it. So then this girl gets accused for a murder. Mm-hmm. And then it turns, it goes from like this um, courtroom drama to just a flashback of her entire life for no reason. Like Sick. stuff you don't okay. even need to know. And it turns into a love triangle. Oh. But here, let me just tell you this. Go for um, it. So this is my interpretation of the sheriff of the town mm-hmm. and him talking to the cops who arrested marsh girl uh-huh um so so it was a murder oh we don't know i mean we it could be an accident we talked to the coroner he says it, it might it's probably an accident but there's a slight chance that it's a murder oh well is there any signs of foul play no there's no signs of foul play oh also the murder quote unquote is the dude fell off from a high place and they even said, oh, he, he just tripped, <sighs> but he could have been pushed. Well, oh, so, oh, oh yeah, goodness. there's no signs of foul play. Oh, well, are there, like, any fingerprints of hers there? No, there's no fingerprints. Uh, is I don't know uh, about you. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> this is captivating. Maybe it's um, just your performance. Did, did anyone see her at the scene of the crime? Did no, he? no one saw her. Oh, my goodness. So what do you have any evidence of her? Like, does she have an alibi? I don't know. We just arrested her. We didn't interrogate her at all. 
So so what evidence do you have? Okay, so get this. The the corpse we found four strands <gasps> of red wool. And get this, when we went to her house to talk to her, guess what we found when we looked through the window? A red hat. Case closed. Oh my we god. Got her. Oh my god. We got her. I thought you said they didn't do investigative work. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly <laughs> I don't know whose side you're on, Anthony, but... But, yeah, and then it... It sounds like a good film. Like I said, it turns into a flashback for her entire life where mm-hmm. she has this abusive father, and because of that, her mother leaves her, and then she has, like, five siblings, and they all leave her. Like, none of them think, <sighs> oh, maybe we should take our youngest sister with us and not leave her with our abusive father. Uh-huh. No, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna leave her. So then... Hmm. Uh, so then sh- they all leave her, and they get this... Uh huh. The father leaves her. He doesn't. Even oh my be goodness! With her. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, so no one wants to be with her, and then it turns into this weird love triangle. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil this right now. Okay, spoilers um, for where the uh, crawdads sing. So they literally anyone. say, "Okay, she does have a really solid alibi. She was out of town, and the only way she could have murdered him was to take the last bus to town, and then take the last bus." back to where she's staying which is only an hour difference so she so she had one hour to kill him uh remove all the evidence and then get back on the bus Mm -hmm. and stuff and they're like that's impossible that's literally impossible like they sell you on how impossible that is yeah so then she gets found not guilty and everyone's mad because of marsh girl yeah true we all hate marsh girl Mm -hmm. because she lives in a marsh get a load of this marsh girl and then at the very end, it's like, oh, she actually did kill him. <gasps> I know, and then it ends. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Um. Okay. This movie's awful. Uh-huh. I can't, I, like, yeah. Uh-huh. I, well, I want to know what Grandma Anthony thought of it. Oh, she loved it. <laughs> uh, did, was it a hit? Yeah. Um, my, awesome. I saw it with both my grandma and grandpa. Uh-huh. My grandpa called it a tearjerker. <laughs> I did not see him cry, so I, okay, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, they they loved it. Um, she said the ending was different in the book. Uh, it's not that like oh, she okay. no, she's still guilty in the book. Uh huh. But the way, like they find out, is just slightly different. Interesting. I didn't know it was a book. That yeah, sounds like I, a very I exciting book. It. <laughs> but yeah, go check out the movie. You'll like it. Um. Me personally or the <laughs> listeners, because I don't think I would. Um, yeah, no, please don't see it. It's so bad. Well, thank you very much yeah. for your experience, your your performance <laughs> with um, the sheriff and the other yeah. cops. And there's honestly so much more I could get into, but I mm-hmm. don't want to be here for like thirty minutes I, talking about it. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll just say, you can you can actually tell they tried in this, mm-hmm. which kind of makes it even worse because like. That's like you're you're trying so hard and like I want to believe in you, but it's just so bad. Mm -hmm. But like, I just mean they tried with like the performances are there. Yeah, like there's good cinematography, but the writing is awful Mm -hmm. and the directing is like it's lifeless. It's like there's nothing there. That's right. And yeah, it just sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish it was a better movie. Like it could have been interesting if it was just a courtroom drama, Mm -hmm. but then they had to bring in her entire life story. And the first love she had, which was good for her, but then he wanted to leave the town to go to college, so then he, she said, I hate you. Dramatic. Yeah, but then he was like, I'm going to come back. I just need to make a life for myself. So, and then, like, the second love, it was horrible. I, I'm going to cut yeah. you off <laughs> there. Uh, a very interesting movie. Yeah. Uh, Two out of ten. But that's it. Uh, we... <laughs> Are now on our yes. main topic. Apologies for 29 minutes <laughs> into the that's episode. Really how long it takes it's us. It's usually. We, I will say we spent a lot of MCU time, but that's okay. Uh, of course, for our final episode, we will be talking about Bullet Train, yes. the hit action. I, I don't even know if I call it a blockbuster. <laughs> um, I would, yeah. Okay. It, well, we have Brad Pitt. You got... A bunch of other people that I don't yeah. know off the top of my head. Brian Tyree, Tyler Henry, um, Aaron Taylor Johnson. You have Joey King. 
Um, Who's Aaron Taylor Johnson? Mustache. Tangerine? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's him? Yeah. That's Quicksilver. No way. The, what the heck? I have two complete. No way. Yeah. You no got uh, way. Logan Lerman. Right. I had, to, I had to look that. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into yeah, it. Let's there's get stuff into I want to talk about, especially with. Uh, never mind. We will begin. Anthony, what did you think of this movie? I want to start off by saying this is like a movie that kind of blindsided us because we had no idea what it was. Mm-hmm. We saw the first trailer and we were immediately like kind of hooked saying we need to review this. Um, and I, I, I like that, mm-hmm. uh, especially that it's a new movie. It's right. not like a franchise or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think this will be an interesting review. I think because so too. you just got out of the theater. I did. I just watched it. I just got out of the theater a week ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's been a while for me. Mm-hmm. I might be a little hazy on some details, mm-hmm. but you're fresh on it. I sure am. Um. And I want to start off by saying, I liked it. I thought <laughs> you're giving continue me okay. continue. I thought it was well made. Um. I wanted an action movie. Hmm. And what I got was an action movie with some laughs. I got some cameos here and there. Brad Pitt was really good. Um, yeah, uh, I think it really gets convoluted when you think about it, especially with the plot. Um, I think the plot is isn't isn't all all there, especially like when it all comes together at the end. Um, with like, oh, why is everyone on the train? Mm. But you know what? If you just shut your brain off and just see, ooh, bright colors, you'll have a good time. I, I, good time. I agree that this is a shut your brain off to enjoy it movie. <laughs> I don't I will I don't want you to misinterpret the look. I do think I would say, I haven't rated this movie in letterbox actually yet, but I would say that this was a good movie. <laughs> um it had potential and I I, like one of the things I really liked about it was that it's like it was a standalone little action movie it seemed it had a lot of guest stars and cameos it seemed very like it it looked fun to look at yeah it Um, feels like an old school action movie yeah uh but ultimately while this movie uh, you do have to shut your brain off to get the highest amount of enjoyment out of it because the the plot is extraordinarily convoluted. Yeah, for those who don't know, Brad Pitt is this, I guess, assassin kind of mm-hmm. guy. He's like a like a hitman for hire yeah. kind of thing. And he's been out of the field for a while, mm-hmm. and he he's coming back, but he wants to do low level jobs mm-hmm. because every time he goes out, someone gets killed. Yeah, and he doesn't want that to happen. He he thinks he's so unlucky, and all he has to do is go on this bullet train. Uh huh. And you just grab this briefcase, but it turns out the entire train is full of assassins. Mm-hmm. Um, they, it's, it's good on paper. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool pitch. Yeah, not so to he mention has to, like, like fight his way through the train. Right. Um, the the way I would like the addition I'd add to it is like the way they go with the plot. It feels like it's trying to be like a murder on the Orient Express, like murder mystery train, like. What's going on? Figure out the answers. Like, here's, like, clues of yeah, who's working for who. Mean. And, like, here's... We're going to, like, keep dropping hints. And we're going to, like, try and let you figure it out. And, well, we'll I'll save my thoughts on the conclusion of everything for the end. But it was... It, it doesn't wrap up as neatly as I'd like it to. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, I think this is a yeah. very stylish movie. Which I think is good. Mm-hmm. I think it could have been way more stylish though. I agree. In that there are so many characters in this and one of the biggest characters is the train itself. Mm-hmm. And so you get some scenes where the I think they say there's what 16 cars. Yes. And one of them is the quiet car. Mm-hmm. There's one where there's just this giant mascot walking through and it's all yeah. like pink and colorful. Mm-hmm. But then you go through the rest of the train, and it's, it's just like a regular train. I right. feel like if they put that style 
yeah and i agree like the rest of the train to give it more character Mm -hmm. and to have it more of an impact so like where we always know like where a certain character is Mm -hmm. i feel like that could help the movie a lot Mm -hmm. um it ha- like that. That's another thing. I, I was thinking during the movie is like I'm waiting for. Well, if this movie like was actually big, or or it, I'm sure it was pretty big. I don't know what the budget looks. It was like, like or, ninety million. Um, I'm sure it performed decent. It was yeah. Brad Pitt on the face of an action movie. It's gonna do pretty good. Um, but like I could just picture in my head some YouTube video with like a map of the train up top and then little names or faces mm-hmm. and then them moving it around to keep everybody up to date. Because that, that's what I was trying to do in my head, but at a certain point, it just gets so, like, I have no idea how, like, where I am on this train yeah. anymore. Because eventually I, all the cars just look the same. Yeah. Like, I, it, I'd um, love if, um, sorry to interrupt you. I'd, I, or I'm, I just want to say I'd love to, if they did that idea yeah. with each car having its own identity uh, and their own kind of twist on it. Because mm-hmm. the quiet car room scene was really interesting. Yeah. It was, but even that scene, it felt like it, it just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Because Lemon who is a character in the movie, not mm-hmm. just a lemon. Yeah. But Lemon fruit. has been in that car the entire movie when Brad Pitt comes in, and it's the scene from the trailer. Uh-huh. But then they're talking out the all throughout, like, before that happens, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's the quiet car. Right. And, I don't know, that that just feels like more of a kind of nitpick, because who knows, he could have moved. Mm-hmm. But well, they, with they, the lack of style, we don't know if he if he did move or not. With that scene, they they um they're still in the quiet room the entire time. Like yeah. the the be, the bit begins with like Brad Pitt saying something loudly, and then the first line from Lemon is "Shh, we're in the quiet car," and then some lady turns around and shushes him, uh, and then he's like, "Sorry," and then he, and then like they do some whisper bit, and then he's like, "Anyways," and then they talk loudly. Yeah. They're still in the quiet room, and they still get shushed by the lady over and over again. But they just end up ignoring it. Yeah. Well, um, I think it really just comes in with the action scene mm-hmm, in that. Which, speaking of, I really like all the action scenes in here. Mm-hmm. Um, David Leach directed this. Yeah. He directed Deadpool 2, and he was uncredited, but he directed John Wick. Mm-hmm. And you right. can really tell because he brings yeah. that kind of frenetic action. That's that's really where all the style that I said earlier of the movie comes in. Right. Because like with the quiet car scene, it com- like it's all there. Um, when Bad Baby comes in as the mm-hmm. wolf, yeah, uh, Brad Pitt just fighting with the briefcase, and it's so clever, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I I'd say in terms of fight choreography, the one challenge they face this entire almost entire movie is that it's on a train. There's an enti- it's like a sixteen car long hallway fight scene yeah. that they have to constantly come up with new bits, new things to like play around with. Uh, and they do a decent job of it, but my main criticism with almost every element of this movie is that it, it feels like it's two or three steps like from reaching really good quality status. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and like be the bougie, I know what they could have done better, but everything just felt like if they'd done a little bit more and pushed further into the ideas, they oh, would yeah. have had a much better outcome. Definitely. I think, like... In terms of, like, the movement of the camera during the fight scenes, um, it had... You could you can tell the hints of inspiration that they had there mm-hmm. with, like, moving it and following things and, like, yeah. trying to keep it snappy and original. But I feel like with the creative process that went on with this movie, there was some sort of pushback where... I don't know if they were scared of going too far or if they, maybe this could just be the vision of... of uh, was it David? David Leach. David Leach. Um, but I feel like if they pushed that and made it more of an identity for them on the bullet train than we're feeling like a... Because it didn't feel like a normal action movie, but it leaned further towards that than it did its own identity, I mm-hmm. would say. Um, I, I mean, mean the fir- I would say it does feel like a, a normal action movie. Not in a bad way. Yeah. But it does feel like an action movie. Like, there's nothing super terrible about the film i just no, feel yeah. like they could have they could have taken so many things further and mm. that would have made it better yeah i think especially just the plot mm-hmm. um because it it kind of just feels like hamstrung yeah. together at points especially with like um prince who's uh joey right. king's character why she's on the train mm-hmm. and just everything with that it's yeah. like i don't like i don't really it buy felt like it. a subpar video game plot Oh yeah. Um, 
and it was just it was like it was either predictable or who cares um was the res- my response to most of the like conclusions in the this movie mm. uh especially whenever we get to spoilers the main one that i'm excited to talk about yeah we um, i feel like we are being negative but there is a lot to like about this yeah. movie too um i think the the main main characters are all so good. I agree. Um, I think the main or like the performances of everybody and yeah. the individual characteristics of everyone were performed yeah. super well. I do I love how like each assassin has their own thing. Mm-hmm. Like that gave so much just character to them all. Definitely. Like even some of the ones where I don't I don't want to name because it's kind of a cameo but like uh-huh. the, the the poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and but like, my I think my favorite character in this is Lemon. Yeah, and his I agree. whole thing is he knows like how to read people based on Thomas the Tank Engine, mm-hmm. and he he tells you it's not Thomas the Train, it's yes. Thomas the Tank. Yes, and he's he's like always so spot on, which mm-hmm. is so funny. I agree, and I like I really liked his character. Um, but yeah, everyone else they have really good characterization. Mm-hmm. Um, like even. Ones I don't like, like Prince, like mm-hmm. her whole thing is that she's able to manipulate people because uh-huh. she's a, a young girl. Right. And that works until they do it like 10 times. Yeah. yeah. There's like, there. there's a lot of good ideas and a good a lot of good concepts that like went into this movie, but not enough like content to stretch that out over the amount of time they needed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The, the like the characters and their moments they shine when they do, but at a certain point everybody's shtick does get old. Yeah, um, I mean if they made alone, this like a ninety minute, just action action throughout the entire yeah. thing. Who like we already know no one really cares about the plot. They're just coming to see Brad Pitt on the train fighting people. Mm-hmm. I feel that would have made a much better movie, a much tighter right. movie. I think if they, I agree, if they avoided the. Like, niche murder mystery, like, here's a million subplots, try and figure out how they connect, have fun plot. Um, I think they would have, it would have performed better mm. if it was just a, I'm going to, like, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to take a super stylized approach at fighting choreography uh, on a train, and it's called the bullet train. Mm. Have fun. But they, I don't know, I think their resources were just allocated super, like, they it wasn't a very balanced... I, I the way I I I put this probably is if this was like a video game and they had like skill points they had to assign they equally assigned it well not to writing um right well the quirky comments and stuff like the parts yeah. for most comedy was pretty good yeah there was one especially that really got me mm-hmm. it was the weekend at Bernie's yeah yeah mm-hmm. I that that got me really good. Like when they are, were it's like if it's an if this was an action comedy purely, I'd say they did really good, but the the serious tone that they tried to infuse with it, the writing was pretty bad. Yeah. However, everything else was even. I'd say nothing really excelled. Nothing was terrible. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Well, one of the things. Well, this is gonna well, I, I contradict. Do, I do what think I'm the action excelled. I don't know I if mean, I'm super. Like, I mean, in, in love my with the action. memory, I'm mainly thinking of the wolf fight, mm-hmm. the fight in the like the concessions car uh-huh. area. At a certain point for me, I think the action, or at least the any scenes with Brad Pitt and the action, kind of blended together. I uh, can see that because yeah. they they had the same vibe, and they were like they were unique, and they had their own like twists and gimmicks and things to break, but. Each time, for me at least, it was like, w- watch the camera track as Brad Pitt swings object number one in his hand. Uh, and it was like, that's definitely oversimplifying it, but I wasn't too taken back by the action. I think, uh, this is like one of the realms where I think they could have done more and pushed the boundaries. Yeah, I see, uh, I see what you mean. But still decent, but lacking. Mm-hmm. Another aspect of the movie that i want to talk about is the the score the music um not even like the the japanese covers of uh i need a hero and staying alive uh even though well i need a hero is played during uh an action scene in the movie and i 
I don't think it fits very well personally. Not even like, or just like how it sounds. I don't even remember like what scene it was in. That's fair. Well, there, there's another action scene that doesn't have music at all. Or I think that's mm-hmm. the whole um, the quiet car scene. No, the well, I don't think it has music, but that was intentional. That yeah. felt good. But there is a full. I think it's between him and the wolf, maybe. Um, I think it's during that fight where mm-hmm. there's no music whatsoever, and it's like. The ADR was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I was fine with that. But it felt weird. It felt like I was just watching two people fight in a room, and I was standing there, like, awkwardly in the corner. Mm -hmm. Uh, The choice of music throughout the thing, nothing, because I don't want just, like, a stereotypical action music thing, but it was kind of in and out, and then, like, they throw in a cover of I Need a Hero uh, in Japanese, and... While it's a cool kind of like throwback to the beginning of the film with the staying alive in Japanese, I don't think it fit the scene super well. But that's just me. That's me, me being super niche. I don't mm. think. I think the score could have been more appropriately put together for the yeah. scenes. I, I am more inclined to mm-hmm. agree with you just because I don't remember the score, and that for me indicates it's not a memorable score. It's not that good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there were like, that was probably one of the weaker parts for me. Yeah. They did kind of just play it safe Mm -hmm. with a lot of it. Like even I'm praising the action scenes a lot, but one of the first ones they do is just kind of a rip off of Deadpool, um, Um, counting the, when Deadpool counts the bullets Uh and this, they count the bodies. Right. No. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So like. That's another thing, is, like, that kind of style of, like, here's some cut-ins from, yeah. like, here, here's, like, a history or something. It doesn't, it, it, it's super kind of front-loaded with that, because yeah. you get, they also have these fun graphic Borderlands-style titles uh, that pop up mm-hmm. whenever a character shows up, and, like, I mean, granted, in the next half of the movie, you're not going to really meet that many new characters, and they still do it, but I figured that was going to be the, more of the vibe. Yeah, I liked the wolves. Um, kind of backstory. Uh-huh. I thought that was cool. I didn't really like Lemon and Tangerines just because, mm-hmm. like, if you're going to just fully rip off Deadpool, and even though David Leitch is the directed, he directed two, not one. Mm-hmm. Um, they just looked at the camera and said one, yeah. two. Yeah, they didn't do anything really stylish with that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, I get it. I get what you're doing. Yeah. Like, some of, like, the action they did in that flashback was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But at a certain point, I was like, just get on with it. Yeah. Keep um, going. I don't know. There was, like, I, I would have liked if the movie was, like, if, I think my main complaint that I'm going to, like, I'll come back to for the rest of this review is that if they just took any of the concepts and pushed into it. Um, I personally liked those that cut in with the numbers and the counting. Yeah, um, I I just think I, they could have done it more. I like. agree. Uh, I think if they like had more fun with the counting even part than just like having it be like a, some sort of commercial where they look at the camera and they say one, like that that's funny, but they could have. I think there was more potential, especially with those characters. If that's if you're gonna oh, establish yeah. that as their bit, let them do that more later. Um, but they're mostly just like a comedy duo for the like rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Um, they could have done more. I wish they would have pushed more boundaries. I wish they would have been scared of getting a like worse review uh, than mm-hmm. like because yeah because yeah. they really do just play it safe a lot. Yeah, like it's just another one of those R-rated, mm-hmm. like very bloody. Uh, yeah. action movies that you would see if you just turned on like TBS on a oh, Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. Right. Uh, do you want to head into spoilers or is there anything else you want to talk about before we do that? I'll sure. say we're at 40 like nine minutes right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Um, uh, spoilers in three. Oh, well do you want to oh. like raid? Oh, Brian tomatoes? <laughs> I, I guess Um, for me, um, I think this is a very <clears throat> like frenetic movie that has a good amount of style, um, and I really enjoyed myself with it. I just wish, like you said, they just went like went more into it. Like they mm-hmm. went all in. They hedged all their bets. Right. And just they they played it safe 
for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I still had a very good time Mm -hmm. with it. I would go see it again. I even considered watching it before again before our review. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. Um, Really, uh, we we were pretty negative. Yeah. But um, it's Still, easier to point out the negatives than the positives when it's you definitely like something worth a watch. I'd say. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Um, yeah, I I'd give it probably a seven out of ten. That's fair. Yeah. I I would say like seventy five for me personally. Yeah. Uh, nothing super exceptional, but it it wasn't terrible. It yeah. just needs to. I think it was afraid of mediocrity, and then in trying to avoid that by doing everything like let's kind of chill, uh, mm-hmm. it cemented itself yeah. but even then like it's still all capable like yeah. the writing is serviceable enough the action i think is the best selling point of it of that along with the characters mm-hmm. um but yeah a lot of it is just serviceable mm-hmm. um another thing i really liked is just yeah. all the cameos i loved they were they were pretty good there's yeah. a lot of characters there's, that, or people there i did not expect to see in this movie cameo especially that I just loved. Yeah, well, and we'll get into that. Let's in do spoilers. Rotten Tomatoes and we yeah. can get right back uh, into that. Yeah. What do you think the Tomato Meter was? Um, channel your inner inner Brad Pitt critic. I want to say, I don't know, because I can see it going either way. Mm-hmm. I'll say it's fresh. Okay. But I don't think it's super fresh. I'll go mm-hmm. sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Yes. Okay. Audience, I think it's gonna be a lot higher. I think. It's going to be people looking just for a good action movie. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking for that, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Like we said, it's a good movie. Um, I would, I'm would. i going to say that's an 86. 86? Yeah, 68, 86. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> the Tomato Meter. You said 68. Yes. The Tomato Meter is not fresh. Oh no! It is fifty four percent. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can um, I can I change my audience? <laughs> no, you may not. No. Uh, the critic consensus is not going to be that high. Then <laughs> is bullet trains, colorful cast, and high speed action are almost enough to keep things going after the story runs out of track. Yeah. Um. Literally. The the story seems to be the main complaint of many people here. Like, really, at that point, just throw out the story. Yeah. Like John Wick. Just mute the entire movie. Watch eyes. Exactly, because like with John Wick, there's no story. Mm-hmm. It's him just getting revenge on, on his, his dog. Yeah, for his dog. Yeah, that's the story. I'm that's, happy with that. There's really no. It's like the story is everyone finding out. Wait, John Wick's after us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we gotta go. Yeah. And then it's just all action, and that's that's all you really need. The audience score. You said eighty six. <laughs> I would like to change it's that. Movement denied. The audience score, it's not too bad. Yeah. You're only nine off. Oh. 77%. Okay. So the audience did have much better thoughts yes. than the critics on this. And I think 77 is adequate. Yeah. I think it's um, it. Yeah. I think the. Or, okay. Well, I want to get into spoilers, first of all. So yeah, let's do that. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you don't want spoilers, but. Uh, if, I, go watch it. It's, it's, yeah, go check it's it out. It's a decent time. Uh, I saw if an anything, IMAX, like, and you know what? That was a cool experience. Fair enough. It wasn't filmed with IMAX camera, so it didn't fill the screen. Uh-huh. That was a little disappointing. Yeah. But you know what? It mm-hmm. was cool. I liked it. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and start spoilers in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. Who? What cameo were you talking about? Channing Tatum. Okay, that's the no. one. That's the one I, that got me. I thought. Well, because whenever the Lost City came out, I knew that. Well, Brad Pitt and Sandra Bullock had like a deal. Yeah, where, that was one of my facts. Um, um I they, think I think I researched. Lost I think City. so. Um, and yeah, they had where um, they can or Brad Pitt cameoed in Sandra Bullock's Lost City, and that Sandra Bullock was going to cameo in Brad Pitt's Bullet yeah, Train. Yeah, it, it was. It wasn't even like a deal. It was just like, oh, we yeah. had so much fun. Right. You want to come over? I well, I thought it was the Lost City first, and then Bullet Train. It mm-hmm. was actually Bullet Train first. Really? And then all three of them had so much fun mm-hmm. that Channing and Sandra Bullock were like, hey, we're doing Lost mm-hmm. City. Do you want to come in and That's do fun. this like, a little small part? Uh-huh. And that that was like, I, I will say the cameos were all super solid. Which cameo was better, Channing Tatum in Bullet Train or Brad Pitt in The Lost City? Probably Channing Tatum. Really? 
Brad Pitt was like probably the only good part of the Lost City, if yeah. any. But I blinked whenever. Come on, there were there were good parts of Lost City. Uh, if you've not seen the Lost City, don't um, listen to our review first. Yes, um, but um, I missed the moment something oh, happens to yeah. like I I looked away. It was the best um, moment. <laughs> yes, it was. But anyway, I would say Brad Pitt has the better cameo. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I guess because you got more of him in Lost City, because it's more of like a supporting character. I guess they yeah. put him on the poster. Ah. Uh. But well, they, they were like, Tatum's came wait, out. you got Brad Pitt to star in our movie? What? Really? Thank you. Oh, my God. Which? And then they uh, ran with it. Which cameo was your favorite? Uh, In this movie? Yes. Probably. Well, Michael Shannon? I don't even. Um, Ryan I'd, Reynolds for I didn't, fu- like a second. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about Ryan Re- Well, Ryan Reynolds being in it and his purpose as a character, first of all. Um, I do kind of love how, like. His whole character was supposed to be on the train. Uh huh. I like, even though the plot was just nothing at that point, how he was like, okay, Carver, I'm going to kill you. And Brad Pitt was like, wait, 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 I'm not uh-huh. Carver. I. Who was your favorite cameo before we get into it? Oh, it, it was um, Chain Tatum. Okay, fair enough. Um, man, this movie's whack. You, they set up so many plot lines of like, and and they sit in there like try and figure it out, figure out how everybody's connected. Why is everybody here to be with everybody? Yeah, and, and then, then it's the just conclusion like, is the big bad was like, I put you all on the train to kill each other. Yeah, because you you kind of killed my wife. You, yeah, you all somehow had parts in killing my wife, and also somehow. Brad Pitt, you suck. It wasn't even you. Um, it was Ryan Reynolds, and that, like, I, man, you set up all this crap and all this like, yeah. Uh, Joey King, I like. She was f- f- the first. Her first like probably through first three scenes, I couldn't stand her. Um, yeah, I, it's it's not her fault. It's the way they wanted her to play the character, but like pompous, like, and that's her point. Is that's how like what her character yeah, is? I feel it was I, really annoying. I feel bad because like. Like Joey King, since I saw her in the kissing booth, mm-hmm. she's just annoyed me in every yeah. movie she's been in. She wasn't great in, but this. like, she's not a bad actor. Mm-hmm. But it, it's there, really just the material she's given. It's yeah. never good. This was not a great character for her. Then the there's like some there's a deeper plot with the father and the elder and um yeah. his son. I mean when it started with that plot line, yeah. I I was mad. I was like where's the bullet train? I'm right. here for the action. And like as soon as they did that, it's like okay, I know what, now I, I know what I'm getting into and that's a underlying yeah. like and then it just completely becomes like a D plot line. Mm-hmm. Like the like just the final reveal being I put you all here to kill each other. It just felt weak. And then there's, like, another reveal where it's, like, I am your father. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's reverse. It's, like, yeah, Dad. And she's just never said that up to that point to be yeah. mysterious. Oh, I did also like Zazzy Beats uh, as the poison person. Right. No, she – I didn't expect I that I really either. liked that scene. I, I didn't expect I'm, it either, I'm even though than... she was in the trailer. She was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, with that. I forgot about that. I, I thought about – that during the scene, I didn't even realize. Yeah. I remember I was like, oh, I bet the person in the mascot is another assassin. Uh-huh. Just because how it was, like, they were acting. Right. And then she took it, she took off the head. I was like, oh, it's Zazzy Beats. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, um, her spoils, we're in the spoiler, mm-hmm. what are you still doing here? They immediately dying. Okay, the wolf immediately dying. I know, yeah, what but they set up bad baby yeah. so much in and the marketing, and then there, he died immediately. And they sit there and take twenty minutes to explain his tragic backstory of rising through the ranks and yeah. getting married to his love, and then it's like, bruh, all that for a bit where it's like Brad Pitt being the bartender there or something, because yeah. he's the one who's poisoned her. I do love though how every person they've killed, they just set them up to look like they're just yeah. drunk or asleep. Yeah. The the funny parts of this movie are funny. Yeah. They do a good job doing comedy. But I, I'll say, like, Deadpool 2 wasn't a very, like, oh, I don't know. There's probably different writers in a whole different situation. Yeah. But I don't, and I don't remember much from Deadpool 2, but I wasn't too impressed with that one. Really? I like it more than the first Deadpool. Really? Yeah. I don't think that one made as much of an impression as me. Or on me. Anyways. um, 
I think I have popcorn stuck in my teeth and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> oh. Okay. Anyways. Um, you got anything else? Like spoilers you want to talk about? How do you feel about Michael Shannon being in it? Who is that? <laughs> he was the white wolf. I don't... Okay. Or uh, it's white death. White death. Yeah. Um, That's MCU, actually. Yeah, yeah um, I was like, that. Either way, that's not Bullet Train. That's something else. That's Bucky. Um... I don't know who that is. That's great for him. <laughs> Michael Shannon is awesome. Is he a good person in real life? I think. Okay. I, don't, I hope so. Uh, what's his... What, what? Michael Shannon. I'm Michael Shannon. <laughs> oh, my God, everybody. We have Michael Shannon in, hey the, in the studio right now. Uh, I forgot... I loved being on Bullet Train. Did you? Yeah. Uh, I'm, what, what, I'm tell us in Man of Steel. Um, can, can you tell us one of your favorite... Thank you, Zod. Can you tell us one of your favorite memories from working on set on Bullet Train? When when I used the gun, and it blew me up. Uh, did they? Did you do that thing yourself where you roll the like cylinder Every, on your everything arm? Everything was me. Everything was even you? even the explosion. I did. Oh, that Oh really? No way. No. Was the was the script uh, you as well? Like, did they write anything for you, or were, did you create that character? They didn't want me to be in the movie. Oh, I wrote myself in. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Michael Shannon, for starring on this yeah, episode. Thank you. Um. Mm-hmm. I loved your work in anything else. I don't. I'm sorry. Sir. Name I don't one. Know. Man of Steel. You were Zod. <laughs> Name something else. Uh, you were uh, uh, Batman v Superman. You were uh, Arthur in Moon Knight. Batman v Superman. Um. Yeah. I'm just nothing else is coming to my my brain right now. Really? Not even when I played a corpse in Batman v Superman. No. Ah, I'm Michael Shannon. Okay, bye, Michael <laughs> Shannon. Uh. <laughs> I don't got nothing else. I, I, don't, I, I really know, <laughs> especially after that whole bit. Yeah. Um, are we? Do you, do we want to wrap up our final episode? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll be back in a few weeks. Yeah, it's yeah. not too bad. August uh, is kind of going by fast. You guys won't have to go without us for uh, too long. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, we're gonna be returning with uh, three thousand years of longing. Yeah. Which I thought would be like bigger than it is c- mm-hmm. but i'm feeling no buzz for it it's probably going to be better than beast with idris yeah. elba another I, th- I think beast will be good i do not another think, i think beast will be mm. very not good another horrible thing about where the crawdads sing is are you um, ju- is this a bit are you going is they play the trailer for three thousand years of longing mm. and i've been purposefully avoiding it uh-huh. because uh, i didn't want to know anything and then they played it uh-huh how like dare the executive producers of Where the Crawl Dead Sing, who, who blame, expressly make that decision. I blame John Regal. I agree. Everything is John Regal's fault. Owner of Regal. Um, no one's going to get that we joke. Would, we would love to have John Regal, owner of Regal, on the show. If you are listening to this, reach out. We'd um, love to have you on. And Michael Shannon. I, I promise I will not do my horrible impression of you. Uh yeah, he uh, he just stormed out of the room. You missed him. <laughs> he was so mad. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it. That's our summer season, our first summer yeah. season. Thank you all for listening. If you haven't checked out our other reviews of the summer, we have No nope, yeah. Love and Thunder and Lightyear, Lightyear. which is now on uh, on Disney Plus. If you're willing, it to is an IMAX enhanced. Ooh. I actually well, I watched famously. The first few I have an IMAX screen at it. home, so that works out really well for me. <laughs> Um, I watched the first few minutes of it just to see it mm-hmm. in the IMAX thing. It was it was pretty cool. You yeah. got to see more of the screen. So yeah. Well, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, and until next time, that's a wrap. <laughs>